Hello guys and welcome back to What If and today we are going to be talking about what if Captain Carter fought the Hydra Stomper. Now, I spoke a little bit in the last episode about how this season's been frustrating me a little bit because of the sort of stupid titles being not really being very descriptive or just describing events that are completely inconsequential um but i thought this was actually quite a decent title for the episode it's essentially um if if you look at the the captain carter episode that we got in the first series it's a it's a sort of retelling of the first avenger which is like the captain america movie and this movie is very much a retelling of Captain America and the Winter Soldier, um, albeit in a very, very succinct 20 minute runtime. I thought it was actually quite a good episode. I thought it was very entertaining. It had some great character work. It had some emotional beats. It had the action that I was craving. And it also told a story that I was actually kind of interested in a little bit. It didn't seem like something that I would have been interested in, but I enjoyed the Captain uh, Captain Carter episode in the first series. I enjoy what they're doing with the character. So I was kind of excited to see that character once again. Especially because I'm fairly certain that the Natasha that we've got in this um, universe is the Natasha from the destroyed universe where Ultron won. I'm fairly certain. I could be wrong. Um, so it was nice to see both of those characters back in the mix. So yeah. It was, on the whole, a very, very interesting, very good episode. So, without much further ado, let's get straight into the review. So, very early on, I clocked that this was a sort of um, retelling of the Winter Soldier, as if um, Captain Carter was Captain America, and Steve Rogers in the Hydra Stomper was Bucky Barnes as the Winter Soldier. It worked well, because it didn't just retell the story, it added in its own sort of deviations, it had its own little interesting little bits. It was a genuinely good half hour of television, although with the bloody credits, there's only about 20 minutes of actual content, and then there's about seven minutes of credits, which is ridiculous if you ask me. Um, like, all four people getting their time in the credits, but seven minutes of credits, d does, it, does it really need seven minutes of credits? Does, does it really, really need that? Because I look at an episode that's 30 minutes and I'm like, oh, brilliant, brilliant. And it turns out to be like 23. And I'm like, what, what, what is going on here? What is happening? Happening? I don't know what accent I slipped into there. That was a bit odd. Um, but yeah, on the whole, the, 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 the credits are just far too long for most Marvel stuff. I've got to be honest, the, the movies I understand, but like the TV shows... If you're telling me the runtime is 40 minutes and then the episode finishes at like 33, it's not a 40 minute runtime. What are you on about? So anyway, let's get back onto the episode. I'm getting distracted. Let's talk about the episode. So it started up um, pretty much where the previous series finished with um, Penny and Penny, Peggy Carter and Black Widow. They were fighting in New York City against the Chitari. And then later on, there's a new mission and they're sent to a dockyard, I think. And in one of the containers is the Hydra Stomper. Now, if you don't remember from the first series, the Hydra Stomper was the thing that um, Steve Rogers used to fight against Hydra um, in the, in the like climactic final battle um, where Captain Carter then got sucked into the the portal that took her to present day. Um, very interesting, I gotta be honest, I didn't expect the Hydra Stomper to come back, um, I thought that was quite cool, and it was interesting to see that Steve Rogers was the one that had been corrupted by, sort of, I wanna say Russian intelligence, but I'm also not sure whether the Red Room is associated with Russia. I'm fairly certain it is but I could be wrong. Um, anyway, the point of this is that it was clearly a very emotional moment for Captain Carter, and you could see that she was like, oh my god, Steve! Ah! Um, but 
unfortunately, Steve is no longer Steve. He is the Hydra Stomper and well, he is the Hydra Stomper, literally. And there's like a cool fight scene in the dockyards. The Hydra Stomper, I do not remember being this OP, but clearly he's had some upgrades in the years pre like uh, in the years past and honestly i was very very impressed with it i thought it was it was quite a cool kind of punchy action scene to start us off it didn't really go as long as i thought it was but i think that's good because it kind of saved the the dramatics for a little bit later on then we had a whole scene where captain cart was basically shouting at nick fury and being like oh i can't believe you didn't tell me that there were rumours that he was still alive, and they're trying to tell her, no, Steve Rogers is not alive, he's, he's just being kept alive by the, the suit, that, that, that is no longer Steve Rogers, and I feel like that's kind of like a similar story beat to how Bucky was, um, in The Winter Soldier, and how they were like, Bucky's no longer there, but, like, Bucky came back eventually, um, so yeah, they headed on, um, to, fight the Hydra Stomper again, because the Hydra Stomper came for Bucky, um, Bucky's now an older, much, much older guy, um, I don't quite know how old he was meant to be in this, because he looked about <laughs> late 50s, but also with the timeline, he should be in, like, late 80s, roughly, um, if he was, like, a teenager, or early 20s in World War Two, then yeah, he would be about 80 by this time, anyway, he's the... Secretary of State or something like that and essentially the Hydra Stomper is coming for Bucky and it's a it's actually it was actually quite a, a cool scene I thought um there was a lot of action there was a moment where Bucky was like no I believe that you're still in there and you can see um him being like <laughs> right back up um ready to shoot, and then that's when Captain Carter came in and started fighting as well, so it was a nice moment that was like, oh my god, he's not going to kill Bucky, oh my god, he is, and then Captain Carter came in and saved the day. Honestly, very, very interesting action sequence, I think this is probably one of the better action sequences that we've got in What If, um, definitely this season, maybe not the first season, a lot of this season has kind of been, that there hasn't been any trying to think there haven't been any sort of like big action sequences on this scale and it did feel like i was watching a really really cool animated movie at points um so yeah i was really really impressed um it also did have a little bit of the air of like the iron giant which is like a classic from the i want to say the 90s i grew up with it it was such a great movie um if you haven't seen it make sure you go check it out but on the whole very very cool so essentially peggy and um black widow what's her name natasha uh they managed to deactivate steve take him to like this secluded base somewhere reboot him and he seems to be okay but this is where we start to learn about where the red room is and what's going on the red room have kind of programmed him to be the sort of be a killing machine essentially which i was sort of like oh that's that's quite cool because obviously they they trained bucky to be a killing machine but they turned the hydra stomper into a killing machine for their own uses um i feel like the show didn't really delve too deeply into what the red room was um but i also have a feeling that's because they do delve deeply into it in black widow which i have not seen um don't shoot me I pick and choose what stuff I watch now. I watched everything up to Endgame, and then I kind of started picking and choosing because they were giving us, like, five movies a year, five TV shows a year, and honestly, I, I ain't got time. I ain't got time to sit through and do my homework. Do you know what I mean? So I thought they gave us enough for me to know roughly what the Red Room was, um, but if they if I'm wrong and they haven't included it in any other piece of Marvel sort of history thing in the mcu then yeah this was a little bit of a little bit of an underwhelming presence of the red room but i i do have faith that they have included the red room in black widow at some point hopefully fingers crossed because i'm sure it's i'm sure it's linked to natasha at some point anyway back to it the town that they're in it was built by the kgb in the well back in the day and it was meant to resemble an american 
town, and my god, it's creepy. It was genuinely such a creepy, awkward um, place, just just disgusting to, to walk around, because you have, like, these idyllic houses, these creepy animatronics going, I want to buy a puppy, I want a hot dog, I love sports, and it's like, huh? This, ugh, like, the shivers that went down my spine, not fun, not fun in the slightest. Um, that we, we got a really, really lovely conversation between Peggy and Steve, um, it, it was quite sweet, and it kind of reminded me of the fact that when I watched Captain America and the Winter Soldier, if you'd have told me that that was a tale of two people, like, Bucky and Steve, who have genuine love for each other, like, they're in love with each other, I would have believed it, I genuinely would have, and I think that's what made this episode work, was it, it kind of fed off of that kind of energy of, this is someone that you love with all your heart, and they really built that up, so I was very happy with that. Um, unfortunately, the animatronics started to attack them, and it, it was it was actually quite a cool scene to see them all attack each other. I wasn't expecting that. Again, really, really, really cool. And then the Red Room arrived because they'd all been under, uh, like, uh, overwhelmed or, like, overpowered by the, like, the, the animatronics. And essentially, they managed to get caught. And the whole thing was the Hydra Stomper was trying to bring Captain Carter to the Red Room like, bait her there, and then there was a massive final battle, and I gotta say, the final battle was actually kind of epic, it was kind of cool, um, Natasha was fighting her own things, they were destroying the town, and then, just as the Hydra Stomper was about to kill Peggy, she managed to get through to him, and he decided to sacrifice himself, and destroy the Red Room in its entirety, I gotta say, the animation in this episode was spectacular. It was genuinely a thrill ride from the moment it started to the moment it ended. And honestly, I don't think I would have wanted to watch it any other way. Do you know what I mean? I feel like you could have made this a, a cool action-packed movie, but like the, the stuff that they were showing only works in animation for me. If you were to do that with CGI, it would just look shit and no matter how much money you pump into it that's what works so well about like um the winter soldier is that it's very grounded in its realism as far as i remember but this one was very sort of like there's a huge satellite station in the sky and that's what the red room is and then like um steve flies up crashes into it and it explodes and it destroys the city uh, that's not something that you can achieve in real life that, and make it look cool. Do you know what I mean? Like, come on. So anyway, the the final bit that we saw was uh, Peggy being um, sucked into, like, another portal. And I was like, okay, this is weird. Because the Watcher was like, and I know everything. Wait, what's happening? And he just watched Peggy get sucked into the portal and went, that's not meant to happen. So clearly, they're building up something really, really cool here. And that's what I like about What If, is the fact that they tell these ridiculous individual stories and then they tie everything together at the end. And I gotta be honest, I do not know who the first guy was. It looked a little bit like Nick Fury, but also I've never seen Nick Fury dress like that. Um, and also the Scarlet Witch was there, Wanda. I don't know what's going on. It looks cool, but I don't know what's happening. So I'm guessing we're going to find out in the final episode, which is what if Strange Supreme intervenes? That could be quite cool. That could actually be quite a cool episode. Okay, I'm kind of excited for the end of the season now. So let's talk scores. Um, honestly, I'm giving this episode a, a solid, solid 90, 92 purely because I think there were some moments that felt a bit corny, especially some of the dialogue between Steve and, and um, Peggy. At times it felt a little bit canned, but the action was really, really cool. The animation was really, really cool. 
It was a nice continuation of Captain Carter's character. I would love to see some sequels to some of the other episodes that we've seen, but also I don't know how many of them you could do because some of them don't require sequels. Um, but this was a really, really cool episode. I do like Captain Carter. I think she's a fabulous character. And honestly, it was a very, very good episode. So if you liked uh, the review, make sure to like, comment, subscribe, do all that YouTube stuff. And I will see you guys later. Keep on ranting. Bye now.